What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Name Toys video. Today, we are back with a brand new 2-in-1 WWE Elite 98 review, as well as ranking the full set of WWE Elite Series 98. If you guys missed out on our last couple videos, we did review Elite 98 Finn Balor and Big E, and then yesterday, we did review Elite 98 Randy Orton and Mandy Rose. Today, we're going to be ranking the full wave, as well as reviewing the last two in the set, which is going to be Farouk and Rick Boogs, which is a figure I'm very excited about. Got a lot of great things going on with this figure. It looks fantastic. Fantastic. Not that Farouk does not, alright? But I think they got a lot of crazy stuff going on with this Rick Boogs. Here's Elite 98, Randy, Mandy, Finn Balor, and Big E. Very interested to see where the ranking goes in this video, but stick around to the very end. We will get into the ranking, of course. But before we do that, we do have to quickly run through Rick Boogs and Farouk. Again, we're back with another Farouk figure. Kind of insane. We just had his Legends figure. We reviewed that full wave, and I was talking about all the different Farouk figures we've gotten, and we continue to add to that list here today. And then we do of our first time in the line Rick Boogs figure over here and I've never really been a fan of the guy but he did hurt himself not too long ago and I think his figure looks really great and Obi makes for a speedy recovery and this figure is off the chain so here's the front viewing windows we get an interchangeable head right here with Farouk I think it looks cool with his Sub-Zero S style gear it's got his helmet on there looking good on the back there kind of looks like Debo from this shot rest of the figures in the wave which we also just looked at then you got Rick Boogs with his guitar picture of him there Rick Boogs and then Rick Boogs and then Boogs of Rick and then yeah I got all the good stuff his name is Rick Bugs. More Rick Bugs here, and that is pretty much our packaging for these guys. But we're going to crack these guys out of their packaging, find out what they're about, run through their accessories, and of course the figures themselves, and then we will rank Elite Series 98 from worst to best. Alright guys, so here's Rick Boogs and Farouk out of the packaging. Of course, really liking what I'm seeing here. A lot of details in both of these figures, but I guess that's kind of a common deal nowadays with Mattel and WWE action figures. I feel like they always pour a ton of details nowadays into every figure. With the price increase, I think they have gladly matched the amount of detail and things that you get with these figures, and it just continues to get better and better as we approach Elite Series 100. Not that good of a series. But what we're gonna do is run through Farouk's accessories and Farouk really quick, and then we'll get into Rick Boogs' accessories and Rick Boogs, and then we're gonna rank Elite Series 98 from worst to best. All right, guys, so getting into Farouk Assad's accessories, he comes with two interchangeable head sculpts and then two pairs of interchangeable hands. Pretty self-explanatory. Now, the head sculpts are the exact same. I think they capture a pretty young Farouk. I think they do for a pretty good job here. Not just the best head sculpt of all time, but I do think the likeness is there. I like the helmet sculpt. It looks to be accurate for me. Like, obviously, this character is before my time being fully embraced into wrestling, but the silver helmet looks good. I like that this is kind of a soft material. You get the hair under there. You even get the straps coming on so I like it I think they did a good job here really nice and silver like the helmet actually was and then you get the exact same head sculpt except for a light blue kind of a powdery blue color his helmet so he looks pretty good here I, I like it a little bit of flesh tone right there on the edge of the helmet but it is pretty much the exact same head with different painted helmet and I like the sculpts and stuff of it I think they did a good job there but this is pretty much the bulk of the accessories not including like the coat that's or you know kind of the attire that he wears over his gear but there's that and then you obviously so you get interchangeable hands. You got the mic holding hands, which are missing the finger tape. And then you have his fisted hands. And something that I'm noticing about this figure, we'll get into in the comparisons, but it's something I noticed about it. But yeah, that's all for his accessories. All right, guys, so getting into Farouk Assad itself, you know, getting into the head sculpt here, we already covered it, but it does look good in proportion here. Going down, you do have the Sub-Zero S gear. It's like, that's just what I think of immediately when I see it. You know, kind of gladiator S, but Sub-Zero is what I think of immediately with the black and blue. You do have the black bicep bands on there. I don't know why they went with this formula instead of the same formula i guess it's because this piece probably wouldn't fit over that gigantic torso that they gave him on his last legends figure and then the hall of champions version of farouk but you do have the nice bands on there he's very toyetic you know he's got a lot of good stuff going on again this isn't removable man so you know the articulation is involved here you can probably get it off if you wanted to but i don't think there's a spot where you can like unclasp it and then you know take it off the figure but got the finn balor s design here with the triangle in blue you got the black trunks on there nothing underneath very quality figure though i like the arm size i like that you got the blue knee pads and then you do have the solid black boots he is on ball joints i'm pretty sure i think overall it's a very like fun figure you know not like you know not the figure that everybody just wants and pleads for but i'm sure there's somebody out there that's been begging for this now i never obtained the hall of champions farouk but it is cool to see you know the acolytes version this version and then the classic elite 38 there really wish all of them were the same skin tone but it would be cool to see a new apa elite like maybe a elite two pack or ringside exclusive two pack or something 
something updated versions of these guys with double jointed arms interchangeable hands better play set of the apa setup you know maybe some cards and some cans i think that would be really sick nonetheless it's cool to see these up next to each other and i gotta i gotta track down one of them ron simmons all right guys so getting into rick boog's accessories his main accessory is going to be the electric guitar here very cool pattern right there and i do believe it is accurate in the pictures it kind of looked like the stripes were more purple but it may be blue it could have just been the thing there but you do get the knobs and you get the strings and you get all the different brackets and things going on i like it a lot very nice details on this you know i've seen multiple electric guitars in my day from figures and stuff like that and i think they did a good job here it even has the straps here with the buckles it's even got some texturing to it now it does pop in half not as a breakaway feature i'm pretty sure it's just so you can put it over the figure and then you know put, reattach it so it's easier to do so but i like this accessory i'm glad that they included it i think an amp would have really put it over the top like having an amp come with it at the same time i think it gets the job done i like it and all those different things after that you get interchangeable hands you got the mic holding hands you get interchangeable fisted hands which are kind of crazy you know you don't get them with every single figure these days and then you get the edge devil horn hook em horn rock and roll style hands which are a nice touch i'm glad they included these as well he also has another accessory that we'll go over when we cover the figure itself right now all right man so getting into rig books starting out with the head sculpt i really like the head sculpt i think the likeness is surely there you have a non-removable headband here but you do have a removable hair piece now this is not you know if this pops out it is not broken they did this so you can have like an updated rick boogs with shorter hair or you can have the long ponytail version and all you got to do is stuff that down in there you guys can see there you plug it in there and then it is like rotational so you know you can put it wherever you'd like but that's pretty cool i like the sculpt of the hair it's got wavy nice color i think the facial hair looks good really good head sculpt i like it a lot you also have the broncos country rubber shirt right here which does have the ability to like pull down so you know you can like pull it off right here now technically i guess this is an accessory very similar to the ringside exclusive undertaker you know where you can like pull the straps down i think that it's inevitable we're gonna have to get a kurt angle ultimate edition with the singlet being able to get removed down there but in all seriousness he does have the let's ride in red font he's got you know all the details and buckles on this thing but it is cool to see the chest tattoo on there and you can remove this and have him wrestle or pull the straps down which i like this i think this is definitely doable i've heard that it's not durable long term like it'll fall apart but i think that it still works for the most part i think it worked better as cloth and spandexy but i still like this a lot i think that you know it gives you a different look and i think an ultimate edition kurt angle with this technology would be pretty sick i, I approve of it you have the you have this sort of like jeans or denim style trunks going on there with the details and the shirt and, you know kind of that same material there got the r b on the butt for rhythm and blues you do have the cuffs you got the thigh cut in there you got the light blue knee pads and then you do have these like i'm pretty sure these are new boots or wrestling shoes right here they're not the jason jordan mold and i don't think they're the kurt angle mold these may be new right there so that is something to note and i don't like how loose the peg is right there but overall this figure is very nice i like it a lot my leg was a little bit bent coming out of the packaging so you may have to heat it up get it straight and then run some cold water on it to fix that but really enjoying the figure i think that the articulation is nice here you know it's it's buttery smooth we don't have any mandy rose situations going on right here arms feel good double jointed bicep swivel all the good stuff he is on ball joint so he can split you got the upper thigh cut double jointed knee and he does have boot rotation right there which again i just don't like how you can see the peg i feel like it could pop out in any moment but very strong rick boogs i like it a lot i think this is awesome and uh as far as your figure comparisons are concerned here he is up next to shinsuke nakamura so you got your white gear shinsuke up next to your rick boogs pretty cool right there i'm gonna go ahead and put this back on right there because it is almost time to rank this set and i don't want him in the nude while ranking the set it's just inappropriate nonetheless very high quality very impressed with this rick boogs figure and uh i'm excited to see where we go with this ranking but uh yeah let's let's shut the hell up and get into that right now. Alright guys, so getting into the ranking of Elite Series 98, and this is from worst to best. So we're going to start off with the figure that I like the least, and work our way up to what I think is number one. And of, go of course going into the criteria for the ranking, now if you're wondering, you know, what goes into the ranking, bunch of different things, excitement level for the figure, how the figure feels in hand, how accurate is the figure, does it look like the person relative to real life, does it look like a shrunk down version of that person, how poseable is it, how fun is it to play around with, its accessories, head sculpt, all these different things play a role and just because a figure is the worst in the set doesn't mean it doesn't have anything good about it and just because a figure comes in at number one doesn't mean that it doesn't have any faults whatsoever and it's just the best figure ever made so with that being said man let's dive into the figure that i put dead last at number six and it's going to be the mandy rose figure now i will say this mandy rose has a very good head sculpt i think it looks just like her i don't think it's perfect but i think it's a step in the right direction over the last one it's 
significantly better, I think, than the Elite 75, but the arm issue with these women's figures is just driving me up the wall, and I cannot rank it any higher until that's fixed, because apparently that's like every single time I get a women's figure, that problem occurs, and I just wasn't that excited for this figure. While I think, you know, an updated figure for her was in the cards, I just, you know, it's just not my favorite. I'd rather have the rest of the set, I think, over the Mandy. Coming in next, we do have Farouk Assad. Yeah, he comes in here, man. Just not my favorite version of Farouk. Don't think it's a figure that, you know, I really needed in my collection. The rest of the figures excite me more, and while it is cool and everything, it's got some things going on for it. It's just not my favorite, you know, and uh, at the end of the day, it just didn't make the cut. Coming in at the number four spot is going to be Big E. Really like this figure. I think the head sculpt's great. I think the double joint arms are great. Gear is great. We just got a Big E, though, and I think that both of them are great. This one is better than that one. It's just not one that I think we necessarily needed. I wish this had been the Elite 95, but I do like the head sculpt. I like a lot of things about the Big E figure, and I think it is the best Big E probably we've ever seen. I just, you know, for me, this isn't going to do it, and he is at number four. Not a bad figure, just not in this countdown. Not going to crack the top three today, but coming in at number three is going to be one of my favorites of all time. It's going to be Randy Orton. This head sculpt's phenomenal. This is honestly a perfect Randy Orton, if you want my honest opinion. I think if the gear was more exciting, it would probably be number one, but since we've seen this exact gear almost to a T, besides the RKO, it's just, uh, it hurt it for sure. Not my favorite there. It is very damn good. Head skull's phenomenal. Great formula on this guy. I mean, they do Randy Orton right, and this is no different here today. It's just he had some tough competition here. And coming down to two and one is gonna be Rick Boogs and Finn Balor. Now, I do not know who's gonna come in at number one. Let's find out right now. Now, there's lots of things when measuring this, and it eats me up alive, but I think I'm gonna go Finn Balor number two and Rick Boogs number one. One. I just like this Rick Boogs a lot. I think he's got a ton of stuff going on with it. Really enjoy the figure. I think the details are phenomenal. Finn Balor is one of my favorites in the world, but them giving him Daniel Bryan legs really hurt the figure. Not my favorite design of the demon. Repeat head sculpt that we've seen so many times before, and I love Finn Balor so much. One of my favorite wrestlers of all time, obviously, but yeah, I just couldn't do it. Just some things about this figure look a bit wonky. Like, am I wrong? Just look at it from afar. I, I don't know. It's like the proportions or something with the long arms and the short legs. I don't know, man. And then the repeat head. I just, uh, it, it pains the hell out of me. It pains me a lot, but this Rick Boogs is phenomenal. Probably gonna crack the top 10 figures of the year, which shouldn't be too far away, but here it is again. We got Rick Boogs at number one, Finn Balor at number two, Randy Orton at number three, Big E at number four, Farouk at number five, and Mandy Dandy Notebook coming in at the bottom. That is gonna finish up my ranking of Elite Series 98. I would love to know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What figure is the best in your opinion? What do you think of the Rick Boogs and the Farouk? What do you think about the Daniel Bryan thighs? People People say that his last figures were too tall, but I don't think so. I think it was pretty money. Like, this formula right here is a perfect Finn Balor. I don't know why somebody would say that he was way too tall. It's like barely a notice. And like up to Randy Orton, like, it gets the job done. You know what I mean? This is a really old figure, too. The Network Spotlight Finn Balor. I just, I don't know, man. It made him way too small, in my opinion. His thighs are pretty beefy, man. They, these look like little kid thighs or something, so... I don't know. I, I, oh, pains me. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you guys for, so much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Leave me your thoughts down below on it. I'm getting the hell out of here. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed one.